All right, welcome to Take 5. This is the second episode. And in this one, I'm going to show you how you can create recursive components in React. It's a little neat trick you can use. And a component in React is just a JavaScript function. So that means that we can use them recursively also. It will work just as you do a recursive call in a function in JavaScript. So I've created this little snippet here on codesandbox.io. And I've included a link to this one in the text below so you can open it up yourself. So what have I done here? I've created two components here. I have the regular app component and I've created the one with a very intuitive name. I'm recursive here. And as you can see, it renders out two components, one parent, that's green, and one child, that's yellow. And I just made some simple styling here with green and yellow and also given some padding. All right, so let's go through this code. You can, as I said, use recursive components in React. In the app component, we just have a regular div here with the class name of app. It doesn't matter. We don't have to have a class name for this one because I'm not styling anything here. And then I use the I'm recursive component and I send in a prop that's called child and I set this one to true. And that's because I want this one to have a child inside of it. So if we look at the I'm recursive component here, you can see that we have a prop that I just structure out here and I set the default value to false. So that way you don't have to specify this prop if you don't want to have a child. Then I render out the div and I set the class name with a turner operator depending on what the prop is. If this prop is true, if the child is true, we know that this one, the first one we render out is going to be its parent. So we set the class name to parent, otherwise we set it to child. Then I just have a regular p tag here and I also do a turner operator inside of this one to render out I'm the parent or I'm the child. And that works the same way as here. It's important to have some conditional here so it won't render out the child forever. In this case, we also check the child prop because we're sending true into it here. This is a short circuit I'm doing here. So if this is true, it will render out this one. And as you can see, I'm not specify any child prop in this one. And that means it will get the default value of false and it will not render this one in the child. So in this case, it's a very, very basic example. I'm just rendering out one child and that's the yellow one here. You could of course have some other prop here that you send in with a counter, for example, you want uh, maybe 10 childs, then you can send in uh, the value 10 here in a prop and then you can use some logic inside of here to count down how many children you render out. And I actually used this one in a real world example and I used it for a message board. I wanted to have a message and then I wanted the user to be able to reply to the message. And that one should look exactly the same as the parent message. So I created one component that's equal to this one that was called, uh, yeah, I don't know, message, I think I called it. Then I could use the message for both the original parent message and for the replies. And that way I didn't have to create two components, one for the original message and one for the replies. So I used the same component for both the parent message and the replies. And that's really neat because you can have less code that way and make it um, yeah, really effective. And I also think that um, many people don't realize that you can do it this way. You can use the component recursively inside of itself. And that's a really neat way of doing things like this so you don't have to create extra components when you don't need them. So this was an eye opener for me when I realized this. Uh, and as I said in the beginning of this video that, uh, yeah, components is only JavaScript functions. You can do things that you can do with a regular JavaScript function and that's why we can use them recursively. I hope this quick little tip was helpful and see you in the next one.